Okay, so I'll state and prove the cyclic decomposition theorem. Okay, I have mentioned this before what the statement is I will make the precise statement a little later but I need to tell you what is the problem. The question is can we write uh, a finite dimensional vector space V as uh, follows Zx1 t direct sum Zx2 t etc. Zx uh, k t that is uh, can I decompose uh, a finite dimensional vector space uh, V such that uh, into a sum of uh, you know, into a direct sum of subspaces such that each subspace is cyclic cyclic with respect to the operator T. So can I find vectors x1, x, x2, etc, xk such that uh, this decomposition is possible okay. The answer is yes it is related to the following problem this is related to the following problem see this is uh, the reason why one must uh, look for such a decomposition is that uh, dealing with dealing with operators over cyclic subspaces is easier than dealing with operators over the general space. So one would like to look at the restriction operators the restriction of the operator T on the cyclic subspace then we have already derived some consequences. For example if you look at the matrix of uh, the restriction of T over the subspace uh, that uh, is a companion matrix etc. Okay. I have not mentioned that is a restriction operator but it is essentially that. So there are some uh, simplifications possible when you study an operator T by restricting the operator to certain subspaces in this uh, instance the cyclic subspaces. This problem is related to another problem which is the following given a finite dimensional vector space V there are uh, subspaces uh, W and W prime such that uh, V is a direct sum of uh, these two subspaces. Now for a finite dimensional vector space uh, this is true even though we will not prove it uh, in, in this course this is true now what is possible is that uh, given a subspace W of V which is not the whole of V uh, in the finite dimensional case there are infinitely many choices for W prime given a subspace W there are, there are examples where given a subspace W there are infinitely many choices of W prime okay. Uh, I can give a simple example motivated by the geometry geometry of R2 this is gives a decomposition the horizontal axis the vertical axis this gives a decomposition take the horizontal axis and look at the subspace generated subspace of all points lying on this line passing through the origin horizontal space and this slanted space this this subspace has the property that the sum is a direct sum decomposition of R2 you can verify this easily unit vector is 1 0 you can take uh, this is the line uh, y equals x so unit vector is uh, unit vector is 1 by root 2 comma 1 by root 2 then any these two vectors are independent so these two vectors form a direct sum decomposition of R2 so in fact any line so take the horizontal and take any slanted line set of all points lying on that line that will that will be a subspace these two together will give rise to a direct sum decomposition of R2 this can be done in Rn also. So given uh, uh, given a subspace it is possible that there are infinitely many subspaces W prime that satisfy this condition uh, we, we call W prime as a subspace complementary to W W prime is called a complementary subspace. is called a complementary subspace complementary to W complement to W it is called a complementary subspace complement to W the question is if you have an operator T can I also look for T invariant subspaces can we extend this to a problem where suppose I have 
suppose that T of W is contained in W that is W is invariant under T can I get a W prime such that W prime is also invariant under T does there exist W prime a subspace such that W prime is also invariant under T okay this is uh, rather too much to expect the answer is in general no okay but we will give a uh, condition under which this holds we will imp we can impose okay the general answer to this question is no general answer to this question is yes given a subspace w in a finite dimensional vector space given a subspace w can I find a complementary subspace w prime this is always possible given a subspace uh, w such that t, uh, given a subspace w that is invariant under t can I find a subspace w prime which is also invariant under t answer is no I will give an example so that you will be convinced um, to get an to get an uh, an affirmative answer you need to impose something more on w that is what I will discuss next but I will give an example to show that the answer uh, in general is no uh, look at uh, look at the following operator t uh, the matrix of T I will write okay I will write T straight away uh, let us look at this diagonal matrix 1 2 0 0 0 3 you look at uh, the space which is null uh, 2 to 3 are the eigenvalues look at null space of 2 minus T I call that W I am not going to show but I am going to leave this as an exercise show that this see this W is an Eigen space so T W is uh, contained in W this is invariant under T that is not a problem okay but there exists no W prime such that uh, W plus W prime is R3 together with the condition that T W prime contained in W prime okay. So if you are seeking an invariant subspace if you are seek given an invariant subset w if you are seeking an invariant subspace w prime the answer in general is no you need some more conditions on w so that this will be satisfied what is that condition that condition is called t admissibility that condition is called t admissibility so let me give this definition <coughs> condition on a subspace being t admissible <coughs> so this is a framework <coughs> V is a finite dimensional vector space T is an operator on V W is a subspace this subspace W is called uh, T admissible if the following two conditions are satisfied the first condition is that it must be invariant under T the second condition is that uh, uh, if ft of uh, y belongs to w where f is any polynomial if ft y belongs to w then there exists z in w such that ft y equals ft z for uh, any polynomial f. this is T admissibility okay where does this come from for one thing the, the question is how is this related to the notion that we discussed just now how is this related to um, seeking uh, a subspace W prime which is also invariant under T given that there is a subspace W which is invariant under T with the assumption that W plus W prime is the whole space okay. W comma W prime gives a direct sum decomposition where does it come from if I have a subspace W given a subs invariant subspace W so let me make the statement this is easy to see uh, a little lemma maybe uh, let uh, V be W direct sum W prime with uh, the following uh, T W is contained in W T W prime is contained in W prime then 
W is T admissible. Then W is T admissible. This is very easy to see. The converse is not at all easy. The converse is non-trivial. The converse is a non-trivial consequence of the cyclic decomposition theorem. What is the what is the con converse? Is the question that I asked you to begin with? Okay. How does this follow? This is very easy. Let me prove this quickly. I want to show that um, this condition is satisfied by W. Okay. See this these this I want to show that uh, W is T admissible okay the, these conditions do not involve W prime okay I want to show W is T admissible. So let me start with the uh, F T Y in uh, okay let I uh, will start like this. This is a take an arbitrary vector in the vector space then I can write that as uh, Y1 plus uh, Y2 y1 is in uh, w y2 is in w prime in a unique way because of the direct sum decomposition v is a direct sum decomposition so this uh, representation is unique <coughs> now for any polynomial f i look at uh, fty ft is linear so fty is fty1 plus f t y 2 uh, both these subspaces are t invariant so this belongs to w this belongs to w prime because both these are invariant subspaces if this belongs to w if this belongs to w then what is the consequence this has to be 0 so f t y uh, belongs to w this statement will imply that f t y 2 is 0 this is in w f t y 2 is 0 if f t y 2 is 0 it means f t y is f t y 1 that is f t y equals f t y 1 with uh, the extra provision for us that y 1 belongs to w this is the condition 2 this is the second condition if f t y belongs to w then there must be exist an z such that f t y equals f t z in this case uh, z is uh, y 1 okay. So this is a simple consequence of uh, the fact that both w and w prime forming a direct sum decomposition of v are invariant under t okay the converse is not that easy it is a consequence of the cyclic decomposition theorem. So this is a notion that is relevant to the statement of the decomposition theorem T admissibility of a subspace. So let me write on the statement T is a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space V. Let W be a T admissible proper subspace of V. W is a T admissible proper subspace of V. So W is not the whole of V, but W could be single term 0. T admissible proper subspace of V. Then what we want to show is that uh, there exists non-zero vectors I will call them x1, x2, etc, x are non-zero vectors in V such that the following conditions uh, hold. Condition 1 is that V is the direct sum of I uh, will start with W0 W0 is the invariant subspace T admissible uh, subspace that I start with then V can be sh uh, shown to be the direct sum of W0 
and these subspaces z x 1 t x 2 t etc x z x r t I also have another condition there exist uh, t annihilators there exist t annihilators there exist t annihilators I will call them uh, p k 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to r t annihilators of what of the x case t annihilators p k corresponding to the vector uh, x k that is p k is a t annihilator of x k etc for 1 up to r k running from 1 up to r such that I have this condition p k divides p k minus 1 for all k k running from 2 to r this time this is p k divides p k minus 1 okay maybe I will just write p k divides p k minus 1 for k equal to 2 3 etc r the last part says that um, okay the last part I will write here itself further the integer uh, r that is what is the number of vectors x1 etc xr that integer r and pk the integer r and pk for which 1 and 2 hold for which 1 and 2 hold are unique okay that is the complete statement as I mentioned before this has 4 steps the last step is the uniqueness I am going to skip the last step uniqueness is not very important so I will skip the last step I will take the other 3 steps and prove this theorem okay you could ask this question how does this uh, answer uh, how does this decomposition answer the one that we started with uh, z x 1 t etc z x r t I mentioned that uh, you could start with w0 to be singleton 0 so this will not be there so v is a direct sum of this this is called the cyclic decomposition of the vector space v we also have extra things about uh, uh, the annihilators and how they are related okay okay there are 3 steps here as I mentioned the proof has 3 steps first step is to show the following step 1 we show that there exists uh, vectors y1 y2 etc yr in v there exists non zero vectors okay. there exists non zero uh, vectors such that uh, such that v is uh, not the direct sum it is just the sum w0 plus z y1 t etc z y r t okay note that this is not the direct sum just the sum this is the first condition second condition if uh, w k is is w0 plus uh, z y1 t etc z y k t w k is the subspace I get uh, by adding these k subspaces to w0 that is w k if w k is this for uh, 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to r then uh, <coughs> the conductor the 
then the conductor P k I will use uh, S y k w k minus 1 this is a notation I have got to explain this notation okay I will do it a little later P k is a polynomial it is a conductor this conductor has uh, the following property has the maximum degree I must tell you that the statement is complicated but the proof of this is easy first step has a maximum degree among uh, among all T annihilators into W k minus 1. what is the meaning of this see so wk is this subspace I look at a particular polynomial this polynomial is denoted by pk this pk has a property that among all the t annihilators into wk minus 1 this one has a maximum degree so let me write down the formulation pk is pk is a maximum <coughs> pk is maximum over all maximum x element of v s of x comma w k minus 1 I have still not defined what this little s is I will do this now and then uh, prove this first step once I define s the second uh, part should be clear so what is this s you recall this subspace S T X W for a subspace so this is really to recall this notion this is the T conductor of X into W that is the set of all polynomials G such that uh, G T X belongs to W this is the T conductor of X into W this is S T uh, we know that this is an ideal this is an ideal in the principal domain F D F T so this is generated by a unique uh, monic polynomial that monic polynomial I will denote it by little s okay to be specific this s for me will be x comma w k minus 1 this is the polynomial this is generated by the polynomial s that uh, unique monic generator s to denote uh, that it depends on x and the subspace w sorry and the subspace w I will denote it like this s x w so little s always denotes the unique monic generator of a particular uh, ideal of polynomials in this instance it is x w s t x w so it is determined by x and w okay so now go back and check this go back and see what what this definition is look at all uh, see look at s x w k minus 1 I told you what this is you look at that uh, ideal s t x comma w k minus 1 fix an x and then uh, your little s x w k minus 1 is a unique monic generator of that ideal you vary x in v and take the maximum of the degree of all those okay then uh, I must mention degree pk degree pk if pk see this is this is an infinite set okay x belongs to v I look at the maximum of the degrees of I must also write maximum degree here so please make this correction also maximum of the degrees of these polynomials the polynomial is s I look at the degrees of those and I will maximize that degree what I am saying is that maximum degree will be equal to degree of pk where what is pk pk is this particular polynomial pk is this particular t annihilator that is you look at the unique monic generator of the ideal 
capital S y k w k minus 1 that is this little s if that is denoted by pk then pk has this maximum property okay. So I look at this ideal take the unique monic generator I am calling that as pk what is the property that pk has with wk minus 1 what is the property that pk has with wk minus 1 in with in relation to wk minus 1 this is that property among all those vectors x which uh, which are taken for that uh, sub, uh, uh, for that ideal I compute those uh, polynomial unique monic polynomials take the maximum of those degrees that degree that number will be equal to degree of this polynomial okay only those numbers coincide so proof of step 1. Let uh, see I want to start with the invariant subspace W0. Okay. I want to start with the invariant subspace W0 and then construct this V. I would rather start with uh, an invariant subspace W and then apply W0 for that. Let uh, W be an invariant subspace of V that is T of W is W contained in W. I take an arbitrary vector y in v if w is uh, a proper invariant subspace of uh, v then we have the following inequalities two inequalities I look at uh, maximum s x comma w x and v okay if w is not v there exists y in uh, v such that y is not in w so I want to show I got to check this step. all that I want to say is if w is not equal to v then I have the following look at uh, okay if w is not equal to v then maximum of s x comma w x and v can uh, can this be 0 can see this is the degree of a polynomial see this s x w is the unique monic generator of s t x w can this be 0 if the maximum is 0 can you see that uh, w has to be the whole of v so this cannot be 0 for one thing it is strictly positive and for the other it cannot exceed the dimension of v no it can be equal to v the dimension can be equal to v uh, the degree can be equal to the dimension of v that is possible because uh, this maximum could uh, happen could happen for the characteristic polynomial this maximum could happen for the characteristic polynomial so in which case it could be equal to dimension of v but it is strictly greater than 0 it is strictly greater than 0 otherwise uh, this w will be the whole of v I will take a particular vector y which attains this maximum let uh, y be a vector in V for which this uh, maximum is attained in principle uh, this Y can be found out there is a Y okay, there is a there is a Y that uh, attains this maximum. all that I will do is consider a new subspace w plus z y of t 
by the way this y cannot be in w <coughs> I have not mentioned that this y cannot be in w note if y is in w then that degree is 0 if y is in w that degree is 0 so I am looking at maximum of all those s y w so y cannot be in w the degree will otherwise be otherwise be 0 but it is strictly positive so consider this subspace now since y does not belong to w remember that uh, we could write down uh, a cyclic basis for this subspace z y t we could write down a cyclic basis for this subspace so okay now that cyclic if if y belongs to w then this subspace will be contained in w but y is not in w so the dimension of this subspace the dimension of this subspace will be <coughs> strictly greater than the dimension of w1 <coughs> dimension of uh, the uh, subspace w that we started with there is at least this is at least one dimensional and uh, that uh, the vector in any basis the vector in that in particular the cyclic basis is independent with uh, I am sorry not w1 just w the vector in zyt uh, in that cyclic basis will be independent with w because it does not belong to w so this dimension is strictly greater than dimension of the subspace w that we started with so what I do now is this is true for any subs any invariant subspace w in particular w0 I am given uh, an invariant subspace so I will remove the statement we are proving applying uh, w0 to w what we have is that uh, there exists a vector instead of y I call it y0 there exists y0 which uh, does not belong to w0 such that such that uh, dimension of uh, w1 is strictly greater than dimension of w0 where for me w1 will be the subspace w0 plus z y0 comma t I'll call it y1 so that uh, I'm consistent with my notation if there are k subspaces here that will be wk there is only one subspace here okay what is uh, yeah w1 is uh, given here what I do now is look at w1 w1 for one thing w0 is invariant under t this is uh, invariant under t cyclic subspace this is invariant under t so the sum will also be invariant under t so w1 is invariant under t if w1 is the whole of the space we are done otherwise I can apply this step to w1 if w1 is not equal to v then uh, we construct y2 such that that is we apply the previous uh, that little result to w1 y2 such that uh, w2 equals w0 plus z y1 t plus z y2 t where the dimension of w2 is uh, strictly greater than uh, the dimension of w1 this is strictly greater than dimension of w0 every step the dimension increases by at least 1 v is finite dimensional so this procedure has to terminate okay this procedure terminates at some point because v is finite dimensional and every time we are increasing the dimension by at least 1 this procedure has to terminate and so I will simply say okay. since this process must terminate we have at after at most dimension v steps we have v equals 
W not plus there is no direct sum just the sum W not plus to begin with okay in step 1 W not plus Z y1 t Z y2 t etc Z y r t I must show that these polynomials satisfy those conditions okay that is easy but this is the first part where uh, we have used W k to denote for any k 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to r W k is this subspace W not z y 1 t etc. z uh, y k t. So we apply this we apply the, pro, the procedure that we uh, started with to this subspace W k to get uh, this formula V is just the sum of these subspaces is it now clear that this these PKs uh, PKs have been chosen like this is it clear that PK must divide okay that comes later okay, we will prove that later. So uh, is it clear that uh, is it clear that what is the condition that have, that we have imposed on uh, y1 for instance okay so you go back go back to this step uh, we have started with the invariant subspace w uh, what is the condition that we have imposed on y y is that vector for which this maximum is obtained attained y is that vector in v for which this maximum is attained so if you go to first step if you go to the first step y1 is the vector for which uh, that maximum is attained okay so if you look at if you look at s i write that here if you look at little s y1 wk minus 1 that is this time w not y1 w not i'm calling this p1 right so by definition this is a maximum degree among all T annihilators into W not is that not how I see I am applying this for W not I am applying this for W not among all those among all those um, among all those X so among all those X and V I look at uh, the subspace W not I look at the polynomial that generates that st and take the maximum I do that for y1 I get p1 p2 similarly so this is really a consequence of how we have chosen y1 y2 etc okay so I will just write uh, here that uh, uh, choice of y case ensure that P k satisfies the maximum property. So as I told you this is a, an easy consequence of the construction of the vectors. I just illustrated for the first vector that uh, this P k satisfies the property that it has maximum degree among all T annihilators into W k minus 1 comes from the construction of the vectors y1 etc yk okay that is step 1 really is that fine so let us move to step 2 I will proceed from step 1 let uh, y1 y2 etc yk be non-zero vectors the fact that these are non-zero I have not mentioned but these cannot be zero otherwise the dimension cannot increase okay. so I will skip that none of these vectors can be zero because if one of them remember that uh, the z the zero comma t we know it is just single term zero okay so dimension cannot increase if uh, this is the crucial step right the, if y is zero the dimension cannot increase so in none of these vectors uh, can be zero so I have not mentioned but that is easy to see. 
let y etc y1 etc yk be the non zero vectors coming from step 2 non zero vectors from from step 1 satisfying uh, just emphasizing the conditions 1 and 2 satisfying the conditions 1 and 2 for a fixed k let me set uh, f as uh, I fixed a k, I fix a k, and then I am looking at uh, I am looking at that subs uh, that uh, sub ring that ideal s t y k comma w k minus one. My little s is the unique monic generator of that ideal. For this step, I am calling that polynomial as f for simplicity. Instead of writing this whole thing, I am denoting it by f. Okay, then what do I know about this f? this f has the property that this f has a property that uh, if you look at f t y k that must belong to w k minus 1. See I have not yet written down what is it that we are going to prove in step 2 okay. I have not yet written down what uh, we are proving in step 2. I am just fixing a notation f is this polynomial then by definition uh, this is the polynomial coming from that st so that is f t y k must belong to w k minus 1. Now it is in w k minus 1 and uh, from the previous uh, step I know what w k is so I know what w k minus 1 is so I can write this f t y k in terms of uh, these subspaces if okay so I have a representation if f t y k can be written as so first one is w0 I will call it y0 it is in w0 I am calling that y0 plus ftyk belongs to wk-1 wk-1 has this plus k-1 terms here k-1 subspaces so I will use this notation i equals 1 to k-1 now I do not know what these uh, I do not know what these vectors are but for one thing I know that uh, these are cyclic subspaces so there is one possibility of uh, what is the basis for this for instance we know that it is y1 t y1 t square y1 etc it is a polynomial in y1 so I will write each term as a polynomial in y1 I will call that gi I will call it gi t y i this is the most general expression for any vector in z y k comma t and remember that each of these cyclic subspaces is invariant under t so is it okay I have I have written a I have given a representation for f t y k I know that it belongs to w k n minus 1 I look at the formula for w k minus 1 the first term is in w naught the rest of the terms are in those k minus 1 subspaces this is the this is the most general formula that one can write down for those terms then what happens what is it uh, that I want to stay uh, mention in step 2 if this happens then f divides each uh, gi okay that is a remarkable property f divides each gi and there exists z0 in w there exists z0 in w0 such that there exists z0 in w0 such that uh, f t y0 equals uh, f t z0 uh, this should remind you of the t admissibility property. So this is a, an immediate consequence of t admissibility of w0 the rest we have to show that is uh, quite non trivial step 2 is probably the most non trivial part of this proof and uh, even in step 2 the second part is easy easy consequence of t admissibility of w 
it is this part that f divides uh, g i that is the most non trivial okay, let me see so I want to prove uh, step 2 proof of step 2. See I have the polynomials f and g i by Euclidean algorithm there exists polynomials h i such that uh, h i comma r i such that uh, I can write the polynomial g i as uh, f i into h i plus r i by Euclidean algorithm where either uh, <coughs> r i is 0 or degree of r i cannot exceed degree of f here uh, i varies from 1 to etc g k minus 1 k minus 1 okay I want to show that um, R i is 0 I want to show that R i is 0 degree of I am sorry it is not f i just f this is f into h i f is the polynomial that I started with so, g i s are the polynomials that come from the general representation of f t y k I want to show that uh, each r i is 0 okay we show that each r i equal to 0 if we show that each r i is 0 then it means that f divides g i for all i okay and second one as I mentioned is uh, an easy consequence of uh, t admissibility of w naught we need to show that each r i is 0 the proof is by contradiction suppose r i is not 0 we will get a contradiction the proof is by induction on k for uh, proving by induction I need a basis step basis step is k equals 1 basis step is k equals 1 for k equals 1 what do I have what is given what, what do I need to prove for k equals 1 what I have is that f t y 1 belongs to w naught the question is does f divide uh, g 1 I am sorry just g 0 no for k equal to 1 this is vacuous for k equal to 1 I have just this f t y k is y naught for k equal to 1 it must be in w k minus 1 that is w naught right for k equal to 1 this is w naught f t y 1 is just y naught this simply does not figure f t y 1 is equal to y naught so the only thing I need to demonstrate is whether this condition is satisfied is verify is this condition is satisfied this is satisfied because w naught is t admissible okay this condition is satisfied because w naught is t admissible so k equal to 1 is really t admissibility of w naught I think I have to stop here and continue tomorrow assume that it is true for k greater than 1 and prove it for uh, prove it for k plus 1 okay I will stop here step 2. <coughs>